I posted images of this case uh, on Facebook recently. It's a tumor that Antonina Kalmakova very kindly shared with me and I, I thought it was well worth a video because it's quite a it's quite an unusual lesion. There are two pieces of tissue which essentially show somewhat different appearances. If we look at the the first piece here, one can see an exophytic nodule. It's ulcerated and it has a wonderful collarette on either side which crosses underneath the lesion at its base. And uh, there's obviously very marked sebocyte formation. So at, at first glance, uh, one would have thought of a sebaceous adenoma. And we'll have a, a little look at the um, higher power magnification. And I think, um, I think that higher power would suggest that that's a pretty reasonable diagnosis. There are basaloid cells, most of which are maturing into sebocytes with granular or bubbly cytoplasm, small nuclei uh, with very, very tiny central nucleoli. And um, I would have thought this, this part of the lesion works, works well with um, uh, spacious adenoma. Mind you, there's a, an odd bit uh, on the left-hand side, but um, we'll look at the other piece of tissue because I think it's going to be a bit more meaningful. So that, there we see the second piece, and again it's ulcerated, and again it's got this collarette. Um, collarette formation around the sebaceous tumour is something that one typically sees in Muratori syndrome. And I think when I add these, these two pieces of tissue together, I would be, I think Muratori syndrome is going to be very likely. Um, and more about that later. Now, when I look at the, the uh, low power of this, it's, it's multi-nodular and, um, that that gives us a, a differential diagnosis of possibly sebaceoma or alternatively sebaceous carcinoma. Um, I wanted to draw your attention to the um, the keratin lined lined uh, ducts and sebaceous tumors of varying sorts typically show differentiation of all parts of the of the follicular sebaceous unit and these structures rep represent abortive differentiation towards the uh, duct and may be seen as I've mentioned that they may they may be seen in any sebaceous tumor but they they are particularly numerous in sebaceoma now this this tumor shows a variety of different features if if we look here for example in in this part of the tumor um one is looking at basaloid cells with small nuclei barely perceptible or very tiny nucleoli uh, and those that feel for example wouldn't wouldn't worry me at all, but if I go back to the lower part, I I've made some annotations here to make life a bit easier, so that we can find some additional features. Perhaps before we uh, go there, let's just have a look, and you you can see that the morphologies change considerably. The nuclei here are much larger; uh, they are vesicular and the nuclei are a little bit more obvious um, and if we just wander around a bit we're, we're seeing we're seeing uh, mitotic activity although mitoses in in themselves don't mean a lot because sebaceous may have large numbers of 
mitotic figures. One thing we are picking up is the nuclei are different from those that I showed you at the very start. And some of them have very prominent nu nuclei. Now here's one of my annotations. The thing is to remember uh, why I marked it. Oh, I see. Um, here we're picking up large nuclei. Uh, they're, they're in comparison to the early ones, they're, they're three or four times the size. And there's one with two nu nuclei. And nu nuclei are generally quite, quite conspicuous. So I think we're beginning to see some pleomorphism. And let me go down and see if I can find, that was annotation two. So let's look at annotation five and see why I, why I marked that one. Oh, annotation five, I know why I marked that, because there's one, two, three, and four mitotic figures. So mitoses are pretty conspicuous. And there's a very pleomorphic cell there. And um, let's see whether there was anything else around here. I think that that was mostly for the mitotic activity. One, two, three. Uh, and four, so four in that field. And if we go a little bit further around, uh, there's another one, five, six. So there are a lot of mitoses. Let me go down to so that. Was an so we need to look at annotation four now and see what it shows. Let's go up to... I think it was just it this this field was just to show some nuclear pleomorphism and, and conspicuous nuclei and there's a another mitosis there. But as I've said in the overall scheme of things, mitotic activity doesn't separate sebaceoma from sebaceous carcinoma very easily. But I think I think this uh, this this is a fascinating tumor. So let let me just go back to the low power view. So um, on one piece of tissue, uh, it looked rather more like a sebaceous adenoma. But I think the degree of nuclear pleomorphism, the prominent nuclei, and the extent of mitotic activity in this lesion. Uh, would be in keeping with sebaceous carcinoma. Now, it may well be that my initial interpretation of the first piece of sebaceous adenoma was in fact wrong, and perhaps the whole thing represents sebaceous carcinoma, and the first piece represents well-differentiated sebaceous carcinoma. And there is some strength to this because there, we haven't seen that annotation. This sort of matches up to some extent with the first piece. Let's just have a look and see why I, why I, um, why I put an annotation there. I, oh yes, well look, uh, here, here you see, um, there is actually quite marked nu nuclear pl pleomorphism there at, two mitoses sitting side side by side uh, and nuclei are, are fairly conspicuous so I think this was see there's a lovely great big nucleus there another one there so I think um, that was just to to um, highlight the nuclei so um, now the clinical information is limited it's a facial biopsy we can see lots of vellus hairs and um, I think it was from a lady age 50 so I think my final diagnosis on this is going to be sebaceous carcinoma with probably well differentiated and poorly differentiated components. 
I don't know whether I can totally write off the first piece as sebaceous as an omer in which a carcinoma is developed. I mean, that's always a possibility, although I've never seen it. And I mentioned the, the striking cholerate and the likely association with um, Muratori syndrome. So this, the, this tumor should be further examined looking for mismatched repair genes, but I, 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 I'm aware that this was not done as this, this case was seen as a consultation. And I, I don't know whether the patient did or did, did, did not have uh, Tori Muir syndrome. So uh, I, I hope that uh, this recording has been of some interest to you. It's certainly a fantastic case. And thank you very much for listening.